but still we know that it's going to happen i'm referring to the punisher um moon knight season two a bit surprised although if i'm sitting in that room of those executives it's like yo we gotta do a season two yo because of how good the season one because of how good season one was and because how it left off we got if they left the they left it with this character we we pretty much do not know anything about and we want to know more um information we we got some um visuals for iron heart um and uh anything else brian that came out for marvel no oh it's and the other like little, yeah it's been little little tidbits we'll get to it i do want to talk about we're in a musicals frame of mind. I got to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, if you've watched our previous show, Joker Two was going to be a, a musical. Um, it has been reported that the Marvels is also is it also going to be a musical? Or I don't know, Brian. I'm still I still don't believe it. It seems far-fetched, but the the report is that it's not a, the whole movie, but there's a sequence somewhere in the multiverse okay. where the characters morph into some sort of musical background and Free Larson and everyone else are singing for at least a scene or two or something. So how do you feel about that? Concerned. Like in a way, like it, we discussed it with Joker. Joker is like of a piece. It's like its own universe. And they want to let Joaquin Phoenix and now Lady Gaga play around in that sandbox and they want to take extreme swings. It like doesn't bother me as much because of what those films are seemingly becoming, which is just a showcase for the, their talent. Marvel's is, there's a lot more writing on that after the first one. This yeah. seems like kind of messing around in a way that you haven't really earned the right to do. And I'm just concerned if it winds up being a major distraction that we're kind of just like, what's going on with Captain Marvel's character? Like, what, what's happening here? Like, why do we care? Like, you know, if we, if we mess this up, it's like two outings, two subpar showings, and then what? I'm, I'm concerned. I don't like it for this movie. If they wanted to do a musical, go on Broadway, really do the the Captain America musical. Really do it. Yeah. <laughs> they keep wanting to do it. They keep yeah. showing it to you. <laughs> it's there for you to use. The thing is, Brian, the, with the multiverse, you can do anything, apparently. Yeah. And so they're using this, this uh, tool, I guess, to do something where they're in a place where they can't do anything else but i guess perform or sing you already know brian that i only care about seeing blue marvel if he's not in the movie this movie is a failure to me <laughs> <laughs> that's my take on that but, you know, um, weird. like we talked about we talked about as the superhero genre evolved i made the case saying i think i thought you would see more directors and writers would use superheroes and comics to subvert existing genres like spy movies like horror movies musical didn't cross my mind as one of the genres that they, they would go to but we need now we now might have two on the board one yeah, more no, right? you know, that's that's wild and then it honestly feels like as i said with joker it, it weirdly feels like a little bit more of a natural extension of the crazy world that todd phillips created with yeah. Captain Marvel, it feels like a force, man. It feels like effort. Yeah, but I, I, I don't. Uh, I'm not. I've never looked forward to this film when it was announced. On my, again, Blue Marvels is all, is all I all I care about. If I see them, then I'm then I'm good for the future of that character, not necessarily for the movie. I don't know how people are going to react to this this uh, this part of the film. Most likely, it would be the most talked about. Whether it's going to be in a good light or bad light, we'll see. We'll see. Um, something that uh, popped up a few, a few a few days ago. Um, what's her name? Dawson Rosario Dawson. 
sort of confirmed but not confirmed her source of information wasn't le like legit she, she said she got this from a fan um that the punisher was being done uh and then she came out it was a fan that told her she didn't know whatever she misspoke but the question of whether the punisher is going to be done is the answer to that is absolutely Punisher is going to get done. John Burton was amazing as the Punisher. First, I still watch when he was in, in Daredevil season two, the rooftop conversation. I still, I still watch those parts because that conversation that they have was just amazing to me. And it's straight out of the comics pretty much, right? Yeah. The, the whole scene. Uh, and John Bernthal also said that if they wanted him back, you know, obviously that this would have to be done right. And we know what he means by that. This can't be no PG-13 Punisher. And if they wanted to be slick about it, this can't be no Punisher shooting at monsters. No, he kills people. <laughs> He'll do that too, if you need him to. As a matter of fact, he did it in uh at the end of season two in daredevil where he was killing the the hand he was shooting human beings per se but you know he was still killing them brian do you think there's any doubt because there's people that, that have said that kevin feige said that the only rated r film that he's going to do is De is deadpool but they're doing a uh, Marvel Zombies. That's going to be TVMA, correct? Yeah. So what made people? What makes people think that the Punisher will not be rated R? Do you think that is any? That's even a possibility, Brian? And if they were doing it PG thirteen, thirteen, you think John Bernthal is going to come back to that? What are your thoughts? Uh, no, and no. Um, <laughs> I, I don't understand why you use this why, why pull this character out of the catalog if you're going to make a pg-13 product it, it yeah. just doesn't make it sense. already shows you don't understand what this character is about and what makes the comic interesting and what makes the world interesting it's a brutal world that's yeah. the idea frank yeah. castle is born from brutality and he toes the line between heroism and villainy you know and, and his form of justice makes batman's look like kids <laughs> So I just don't understand why, why start down the path and then go halfway. It's like, yeah. it's a guaranteed failure as a product. And I don't think Bernthal would do it. This is a busy guy, right? This is the guy, this is not a guy who needs the work, right? We own this city. He's in movies. Like he's everywhere. Yeah, he's getting yeah, his checks. Yeah. So yeah, you got to yeah. get his attention. If you want him to shoot, I don't know, 18 episodes of Punisher. I don't think it would be that long, but 12 episodes of Punisher do multiple seasons have him do crossovers with Matt Murdock again. Like, yeah, like you have to give him a reason to do that. It does concern me a tiny little bit, this little Chad Stahelski bit that dropped where he said he had a conversation with Kevin Feige a couple of years back about doing Blade. And he said the only Blade he was interested in was an R-rated Blade. And they agreed, I, I, I not, heard about they agreed not to pursue it. And it made me wonder, is there a slight chance that Blade is not rated R? And that sort of, in my head, was like, oh, if it's not, does that mean that Daredevil and something like Punisher, they might actually try to get away with an edgy PG-13? Oh, gosh, I hope not. I just, I just think these shows, you know, it's interesting. I, this show, there's a show on Amazon right now, The Terminal List. Mm -hmm. um, it's not gotten great reviews from the critics. Chris Pratt's the star. It's a Punisher-type show. It's it's a, it's a it's a seal coming back from a deployment his family is killed brutally in mysterious fashion and he he basically puts together a list of people responsible and he goes on a rampage and he kills them in all sorts of you know harsh and punishing ways that's a, a whole show that's all that's all it is and it's like punisher light but i'm like you couldn't do that show PG-13. I watched that show and I'm like, if you took the violence out of it, if you took the barbarism out of it, you would rip the heart out of the show. And I, I think Punisher is the same way. So no, I, I, 
I'd be shocked if it was a PG-13 Punisher. And I think if they did it, it would be poor viewership, poor reviews in one season and done. Yeah. I spoke to some colleagues of mine, and I, I, as you heard as well, the, the the critic reviews were pretty bad, but people whom the audience score is like way high. It's like in the 90s. I couldn't stop watching it. It's like one wow. of those things where you, you get immersed in it, and you're kind of like, and like Pratt is not my favorite lead. I'll be quite honest. I'm not a Chris Pratt guy. I've never been. Um, even Star-Lord, Jurassic World. He, I, him as action star has never totally sold me. Yeah, yeah. But the show is compelling. It's very atmospheric. It's very dark. It's relentless. And like they do a nice job of like you. It's a little bit of the like he's flashing back. It's hard to explain because he's going through a trauma. Basically, there's something wrong, literally something wrong with his mind. That's it's based on a book. But you're in it with him. Okay. Like you're in it with him. And that's kind of all you can ask for a show like this. And Taylor Kitsch is kind of the number two in this show, and he's pretty good. Like, I hadn't seen him do stuff in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, it's it's like I would recommend watching it, but I'm like, when that's you watch nice. it, I felt like I was watching a little bit of Frank Castle. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section what you guys think of the possibility of a PG-13 Punisher. And are you interested in that? Let us know. In the and Rosario Dawson, by the way, has done this before. So this is a leak. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I forget exactly what it was that she absolutely confirmed by mistake a couple years back. <laughs> but this is 100% real. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we move on, uh, Blade... The conversations that I've had regarding Blade is that, because here's a possibility, Brian, for PG-13. The conversations that I've had regarding Blade is um, they're going to his origin. And I believe this is set in the 1920s or 30s, I forget. Yep. Um, he goes by a specific name, I don't know what, and he doesn't really, and it was interesting, I was watching um, Geek Culture, I believe or Comics Explained, one of the two. They're the same guy. Um, he stated that he didn't turn into a daywalker till after the movie came out. So he wasn't a daywalker. He was just a vampire hunter. Um, and he turned into a, 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 a daywalker vampire like late in his comic book run. So I, I found that very interesting. And he's going to be killing monsters and vampires, Brian. Um, Dracula, maybe. That's one rumor. Dracula, I think that's what it's going to be. So is the possibility of a PG-13 movie still on the table, Brian? And if, and if it's what we're talking about here, could that work for Blade? I mean, it has to be like the Batman. I mean, that's, that's, that's the line. I mean, if Batman is, I don't know how the Batman is PG 13 to be quite <laughs> honest, but like, that's it. I mean, if you're going to do a, a, a movie about a, a, a character like blade, I think it's gotta be right to the line. And, and then some, and you're right. When you go back to the 1920s, that might buy you a little bit of freedom to be a little less gritty than you would if it was a modern piece. Um, and certainly if you're introducing the supernatural, and creatures, you can be violent without it being our rate. It gives you a little more room, right? It's like, as long as you're not chopping heads off and, you know, blood's not everywhere like it is in The Witcher, like you can yeah. kind of be very violent without being R rated. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, it does it, it diminishes my interest a tiny bit. Like, not, it doesn't make me not want to see it. But yeah, it's like one or two percent. But I'm like, I think if it was R, I would just feel like there's more flexibility. More flexibility to do the action any way you want. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of funny when when this the Helsey thing came up, I was like, oh, it's kind of too bad. I mean, he's the director of John Wick. I mean, he's one of the most you know celebrated action directors working today. I was like, hey, I wouldn't mind seeing his choreographed blade fights. Um, but you know, I guess we won't get we won't get to do that. So. Um, From what I've heard also, based on the, the source that I had, that the fight sequences look dope. They, because they, he's he's seen the fight sequences and, and he says, like, it looks amazing. So, but that'd be let's, yeah, let's, let's see. Let's see. Um, 
Ironheart, Brian. Yeah, we haven't talked about this much, but it's coming together. Brian, because I don't care too much about this. I haven't read anything regarding the character. I know of the character. I don't know too much about the character. Never read a comic book. Um, but I haven't seen, I, I, based on what I've seen thus far, it's still up in the air for me. I still got to see a trailer. I got to see how that armor that she's in moves. Um, and the hood character, let's see, man. I'm not too much of a fan of the, the, the actor. Anthony probably Ramos. Because, yes. Probably because of in the Heights. <laughs> um, I don't know, Brian. I don't. I don't know about this. And Agatha is going to play a big part, apparently, in this uh, show. Um, what are your thoughts, Brian? Do you feel similar uh, to how I feel regarding? You know, I don't know too much about the character, therefore I don't care too much. I, I have to see a little more, a little bit more based on what I've uh, seen so thus far. I can't tell. Well, this will be one of the tasks of Wakanda Forever is to get you excited for this show. Uh, I thought it was not a coincidence that Dominique Thorne, you see her on screen, you see her hammering her version of the Mark I, you see the heart, the iron heart, literally shape being cut out of the initial suit, which looks appropriately retro, similar to, you know, uh, Tony Stark's one that he built in the cave. Yeah. So that will be one of the things that will kind of forever, like if it's as big as Marvel believes and as big as we believe it can be, if her performance is notable within that, yeah, that show will pick up a huge lift coming off that. So I think that's going to be the real key, right? And like you know, let's be square. I mean, they're giving they're giving Kugler the the keys to handle that, you probably trust him more than most to figure out a way to give you a good intro. Um, I have questions. Like, I, you know, I think, I don't really have an opinion of Anthony Ramos. I mean, obviously he hails from Hamilton too. That's kind of where he first got his name. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a big year for him. Like he's playing the lead villain in this show. He is the lead pro uh, protagonist in the new Transformers vision that Stephen ah. Cable is doing. Um, so big year for him as kind of like joining franchise movies and seeing if the audience will respond to him. Um, I think the thing that looms honestly large over the Ironheart series though is comics fans have no problem distinguishing Riri Williams from Tony Stark. Mainstream audiences who are not familiar with the Ironheart comic, how do they process this is rdj's shadow just too big still and too recent over the idea of a genius scientist engineer who then you know builds a suit of armor and uses it for good like that's my fear with this show is that it comes out and everyone looks at it and no matter how good it is all they see is yeah but what if it was rdj as iron why what, what if it was just an iron man tv show and that's my like i don't know if this show can totally escape that even though that's not a fair comparison yeah the, the thing about rdj's performance as uh tony stark and iron man is yeah the iron the suits it, it was just his charisma his style yeah his style it, it, the way he you know every time he was on screen you you were hanging on each thing that he was saying because it was either gonna be funny or uh, or it was going to be interesting. Um, obviously, this can't be replicated. So we're left with whatever we see in Black Panther. And I think you're, you're correct in, in pointing that out, that that is going to be what drives uh, the success for Ironheart when that comes out. And it's a shame, Brian, because we spoke about this in the past, is the treatment that they're giving Ironheart for Black Panther was the same treatment that, that needed to be done for Hercules in Thor, Love and Blunder. Yes, I agree. Uh, the other thing that, but the, to the, along these, these, these and, and to Pablo's point, what he's talking about is instead of an end credit sequence that the character actually be introduced in earnest in a big film so that you would get excited about where it was going. We, we are in complete agreement on that. 
Um, the other thing that makes me concerned about the Iron Man, Iron Heart comparison is that they seem to be actually drawing your attention to the parallels. So as I said, in the trailer, that looks a lot like the Mark I armor. And in fact, we read stories saying they want her to construct her first sort of very primitive rudimentary suit of armor, almost similar, not in the cave, but similarly kind of clunky and incomplete the way that Tony Stark did in Iron Man 1. They also said the rumor is, right, we talk about the hood. Well, the connection is that's his last name is Stain. He's Obadiah Stain's son. So you're drawing that bridge to Jeff Bridges and the, the villain from Iron Man 1. It's like you're almost asking the audience to put them side by side. And I'm not sure that's, again, for people who don't know both characters already coming in, I'm not sure that's the best tact for people who then will just say unfairly, well, Dominique Thorne, you just, you just, you're, you're great, but you're not a Robert Downey Jr. But who yeah, is? That's yeah, the exactly. No one. Um, one. One thing that I found interesting that um, is going to be tech versus magic. Which um, in the comics, it was usually Iron Man versus uh, the Ten Rings guy. What's his name again? The Mandarin. Mandarin. And, and, it, and it will be sort of that tech versus this unknown yeah. power and stuff like that. So it sort of brings back to see how that would have looked like, at least to me, if we would have actually had the Mandarin similar to what we had in the comics. But sure. it's going to be tech against yeah. versus magic. Is going to see we're going to yeah. see what that's going to look like, and that um, also supposedly will, as you said, will connect to Agatha. Uh, it will supposedly then connect to Doc Strange a little bit. So you you know that's we'll see what they're able to do with that. I think we have our questions about both the Agatha show and the state of Doctor Strange right now, the way we left him. Yeah. Um, side note there, by the way, I you know I had a chance to finally see everything everywhere all at once. Oh. Yes, I haven't seen it. And, and I, you know, it's not a perfect movie. Uh, the Russos produced it, the Daniels directed it, but I will say there's a lot of things in there that I found myself just wishing Marvel had done in Doctor Strange, just in terms of the length the movie went to, the swings that it took and the way multiversal action was shown i thought they came up with some cool ideas uh, michelle yo is great in the movie um so it's not a perfect film it, it gets very long in the third act but there's a couple action sequences that i really liked and was like man if marvel had just stolen that idea <laughs> i think we might have felt a little bit differently about doc strange too didn't go far enough was my message there so. mm. Let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of uh, Ironheart and the show. Uh, do you care? Are you looking forward to it? I, are you waiting to see Black Panther in order to, for you to make a determination on whether you want to see an Ironheart show? Um, and lastly, listen. When we saw the first season of Moon Knight, every week was like, what's going to happen next? I still find it brilliant that they never showed us what actually happened in those moments where something was going to happen, um, whether or not he was in a situation where he wasn't going to survive and something happened and he's out of it and we don't know how it was done. And often we thought it was either, um, what's the guy's name? Mark Spector. Yep. Um, and there were moments where neither of them were aware of um sorry i lost between a thought um and there were moments where neither of them knew who was the one that saved each other because it wasn't scott or wasn't mark in the last episode of uh moon knight we finally get a glimpse of jake and i loved that scene brian the way he kicked that wheelchair aside was hilarious um and they always hinted at this character but they never gave us any material to sort of really um uh digest and now they have this uh possibility with the announcement uh, is has this been confirmed brian that the moon knight season two is a is a, is a go 
not confirmed, but this would certainly be something that D23, you would expect if they're going to do it, they will formalize it there. And, and it seems like Oscar Isaac is, is dropping some hints that it, that it may happen. I think it also feeds into, we talked about some of the Marvel trademarks and Midnight Suns, and at least mm -hmm. in one of the incarnations, Moon Knight is, is in that crew. So I think we've been waiting to, you know, Moon Knight existed really separate from the MCU. That's one of the things I think worked for the show that they, they and, the, and the creators talked about it. They had a lot of discussions about bringing known characters into that series and decided with Kevin Feige to really keep them out of it. But at some point, you know that Moon Knight's coming back around. Oscar Isaac is getting his franchise. They're coming back around and connecting it to the universe. So, you know, it looks like if you got, you know, you got Blade on the table, um, we don't have a, a formal Ghost Rider, but you assume that's coming. Um, and then, you know, you're going to have uh, the potential, maybe you won't be able to use, well, I don't know. I don't think they would use Morbius after what happened at Sony. That was, he's, he's generally in, in, in the Midnight Suns, but Moon Knight has been in the more recent version. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's another clue headed in that direction. I think. Do you think Oscar Isaac was sort of wait, took a wait and see approach to see how Moon Knight was received before making any plans for a season two? Yeah, probably. I mean, I think there's a little bit of that. I mean, I think, yeah, as we say it kind of jokingly, but because he was he was in Star Wars and he's seemingly been trying, he was in X Men. He's seemingly been trying to get get into a franchise where he's both critically acclaimed and the franchise kind of takes off, and he hasn't quite stuck that landing yet. Yeah. Um, he did a great job in Moon Knight season one, but yeah, I think so. I think also for him, I don't know that he would do it unless he could play Lockley. Right? It's like. I don't know that he would come back to just do Mark and Steven again. Kind of did yeah, that. Yeah. And he yeah, did it really well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Lockley's yeah. the key for him to sign up to do season two. I don't know that they would bother bringing Hawk back. I mean, I know technically he was around sort of, maybe he was eliminated at the very end or taken away, but I think they'd go different. Um, I would too. Antagonist. I don't think Hawk would come back. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think Lock, if we get to see Lock, if Lockley is the star of season two, there's real potential there for that. Yeah, to be different and fun. Yeah. Um. One last thing before we sign off, there was one thing that I wanted to talk about because it has been in the news regarding Giancarlo Esposito possibly um, being uh suggested to play a number of roles not all at the same number, time whatever. yes you're right a number of uh, spots um magneto as one doom as the other the only one i find interesting brian is professor x and this is something that i've believed a long time ago if they wanted to do this i think this would be the role that he would play why i've already seen doom uh Esposito be a bad guy. He's pretty consistent at being that in his uh, roles, even since early. Yeah, Gus Fring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even before that, when he was younger yeah. he, and, and doing Spike Lee films and stuff, he was always, you know, a, a pretty bad guy and he's always played it well. But I don't want to see it in, in Doom. I don't want to see it as Magneto. Professor X sounds more interesting to me. And based on the conversation I had with Alex Bernstein, um, he said X-Men is different now than what we, I guess, were used to seeing in um, X-Men animated series and in the comics from the past. It's changed. And Professor X is not necessarily a good guy he sort of operates in a gray area he makes questionable decisions they even has magneto being like yo what's wrong with this dude that's why it's not far-fetched brian that this dude has been wiping minds uh your thoughts he's referring, yeah he's probably referring to i think it's jonathan hickman who who has reinvented the x-men x world i think that might be what he's what alex yes. is referring to um you know my my only question slash concern with this is that um he doesn't look it, but Esposito is 64 today. That's my only question wow. is, mm -hmm. you know, again, I just don't, I think your, your Charles Xavier has to, has to be good for that role for 10 to 15 years. And I'm trying to say like, I, and Patrick Stewart made it. Patrick Stewart is now 80. Mm -hmm. 
But is that what Marvel wants in terms of like its team? If they have a 65 year old Professor X, like that sort of, there's some dominoes there, right? It's like when Matthew Vaughn did first class, the reason why you do James McAvoy is so you can do young across the board. That gets yeah. fast bender in the same generation. I'm not convinced that Marvel wants to go with a 65 year old Professor X. Although I agree with you, I think he would do a good job. And I think his range is beyond just being a villain. Yeah. And he sort of has the, the soothing sound of a professor, which actually you need for this role. Yeah. But that's my one, like, I'm not sure. That strikes me as maybe we missed I, the window on that. Yeah, I agree with you. Because if you go, I mean, again, he doesn't look it, but he's up there and... I've I've heard Denzel Washington as as Mike Needle. He's like I don't I don't want I don't want to see that. Denzel Washington doesn't play anybody but Denzel Washington. You watch Denzel Washington to see Denzel Washington. <laughs> Equal, equalizer three. That's that's coming. So <laughs> yeah, and I can't wait for that. But let's let's not the big names, Brian. We still have to do that show about the big names. Everybody wants the big the big names want to come to the genre. I Denzel don't want to see that. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it, He's beyond that. He's yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, very interesting news from Marvel. Um, Can I toss one more in here? Sure. Patton Oswalt seemingly confirming that Eternals 2 is a go with Chloe Zhao back. Do you think that's real or not? I'm, I'd be surprised. But he said it as if it was done. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised, Brian, if Chloe Zhao came to Kevin and said, let's do it your way this time. <laughs> you know? Because visually, the movie was dope. Um, and you said it. There, there's... There's a lot of elements in this movie that that could have been great, and the way this this was edited uh, and, and cut um, just didn't work for a lot of people. I I still think I I, I still enjoyed the movie. Is it top shelf? No, um, but um, if that is the case that she's coming back, I I think it I think that conversation was had. So then Kevin Feige with his best Vader, you have failed me <laughs> last time, Admiral. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> accepted, <laughs> Captain Nita. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be I'd be curious. I feel like if they do it, the it definitely needs some some retooling. Um I'd be very curious to see if that means the entire lineup comes back. I say no. I think they would actually mess around with the lineup. Obviously, they'd have to make room for Pip and Eros. I mean, that's probably part of that equation. Um, as I said, I think one of the fundamental struggles that first movie had is I just don't think Richard Madden and Gemma Chan work. Uh, and so, obviously, we left Icarus in a different place. Is It seems like he's dead, but we kind of know he's not. So, I don't know. Like, it feels like, as I said, you kind of... But we at the same time, Druig was awesome. Um, so, like... They've got to play around. Would Angelina Jolie come back and do the same thing again? I don't know. Uh, you know, there's just, to me, there's a lot of questions. And I almost feel like if she did it and if they were willing to do it, it would look maybe more different than your typical sequel in terms of who's actually in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see how this one turns out. If that's if that is the case that she's going to do it again, um, it would be very interesting to see what sort of uh, different touch she puts on it uh, and the final result of that movie. Because um, again, I enjoyed this the first one, but uh, there was more to it that I don't think we got because of the way it was cut. Marvel editing is a recurring theme right now. We talk about VFX has gotten a lot of negative pub editing underrated problem there's a lot like thor love and thunder eternals there's movies where you're watching it and you're like there has to have been something better on the cutting room floor but there's elements in here that really work and it's so uneven you're like who's in post-production kind of messing this up a little bit 
It's just what happens when you have when you're doing too much at the same time. Too yeah, much, I mean, you, you, things slip through the cracks, and it's like, it's good, it's good. Don't worry about it. Oh my God, D twenty three is on its way. We're gonna certainly get some huge announcement. The expectation for this, Brian, is is high because they they set themselves up. They said the the bigger announcements are gonna be coming over at D twenty three. Um, we expect X Men. We expect some um, news from for Fantastic Four. Um, s- some more shows, perhaps some more movies. Brian, for for D for for um, oh Star Wars, obviously is just not going to be Marvel. There's a lot of stuff that they're going to be announcing for D23. I can't wait, Brian. I'm sure you can't either. Um, and that's it for us, Brian. Any last words? I mean, we did an entire Marvel show, and you you're not gonna you're not gonna put a plug in for She Hulk one week from now. Oh my! I, I, that's that is how far removed I am from this show, Brian. <laughs> it doesn't even exist unless I see it. Out of sight, out of mind for me with with She Hulk. Let's see you, though. I said, I say. By the way, <laughs> Tatiana Maslany. That was one of the funnier headlines where she was out publicly lobbying for She-Hulk to lead a force. And I'm like, listen, listen, you got to check yourself. <laughs> let's, let's just hold off on giving you a team to lead just for a second. Although as I texted you, I can't, I, I might have to, I might have to retract some of my statements because I found out and I totally didn't know this. I found out that the director of this show is actually married to one of my friends from high school. Ah, uh, yes, I remember. And uh, I was like, I totally didn't know that. And I found that out. I was like, oh, maybe I got to be a little less harsh on this show. I will watch it. But man, I am just like, I don't even know. I don't even know. My bar is as low as it can get going. Yeah. This. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that'll be coming up soon. In one week, you said? It's now it's it's coming on Thursdays instead of the usual Wednesday. That's but next yes, Thursday. Yeah. We're taping this on okay. a Tuesday. It's coming. Yeah. Nine days from now. All right, let's see. I mean, we've been talking trash about this uh, show, Brian. Let's see if it'll like get the 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 people who love the show to 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 comment on on the on in the comment section about what we've said because we've really been really harsh. We've had no hopes for this show. Um, it is what it is. But let's see. Let's see. Um, that's a, that's our show for today. Please hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time on an agenda report.